pizza time. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetrabit Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. Go help Mort with the like button below. It's time to find some more Pizza Tower Lost Bits. All right, so to start, let's kick things off for this video by taking a deeper look at some of Peppino's unused transformations. First, as we went over in my last video, several of these were shown off as teasers in old demo builds of Pizza Tower as potential transformations that were planned to be added to the game. And although it was difficult to tell what they would have been just based on their images, thankfully the game's main developer, McPig, had given some more context for most of these in the Pizza Tower Discord. Now first we got the animatronic Peppino transformation that appears to have been later reworked into Peshino. Apparently, this transformation originally would have allowed the player to make Peppino play on his accordion, which would have put certain enemies to sleep. And then the player would be able to revert back to normal by apparently just running into some spikes. Now, as some of you had pointed out in my last video, animatronic Peppino here wasn't completely scrapped, but rather had its effect reworked to be more of a downside than a helpful ability as seen in the FNAF-inspired level, Don't Make a Sound. Where, after getting bamboozled, Peppino will become an animatronic, which will reduce his movement and also cause the player to lose 50 points over time. Then next is this green spinning Peppino, aptly titled just Spinny Peppino, and wouldn't you know, this transformation would make you spin fast and fly up high before spinning back down, where you would be stunned for a bit after that. And if this sounds familiar, this basically appears to be like Kirby's tornado copy ability from the Kirby games. So it turns out I was completely wrong when it came to my speculation on the superhero Peppino transformation here, thinking it might have transformed Peppino moveset into the old noise moveset. In actuality, this transformation would apparently simply allow Peppino to fly around and destroy metal blocks when running into them. The latter part is something you can do by default, so I guess flying around was the main draw with this one. The Shy Peppino transformation here is next, and this would apparently have been activated when coming into contact with this enemy that was scrapped from the game known simply as Pizza Lady. And in this Shy state, Peppino wouldn't be able to dash until touching some spikes to return back to the normal state. So yeah, if you have trouble talking to girls, don't worry, so does Peppino. Then next up is Meteor Peppino, which would have been triggered by another unused enemy, Muscle Pizza, who would punch Peppino into this state, sending him flying horizontally. If you hit a slope after being punched, you would have bounced off of it, or otherwise you would just slam into the next wall. Now, interestingly, despite going unused, these animations that you've been seeing are actually still found left over in the release build of this game. Now next we have this transformation that was known as Caffeinated Peppino, and it would have been activated when yet another scrapped enemy, Cool Kid, would toss some coffee or energy drinks, probably G Fuel, at the player. Use code Tetra to save 20-30% to off at gfuel.com. In this hyped up state, Peppino would run really fast and would just keep running until he got hit. Now next we got a pretty interesting scrapped idea with Hungry Peppino here. In this state, Peppino would apparently be forced to follow the scent of some food, and apparently wouldn't stop until he reached it. And finally, I think the best description for one of these scrap transformations is for Muscle Peppino here, where the added ability was simply described as, makes you able to destroy everything. Now, how far everything would have extended isn't clear, but I reckon you would simply be able to break any blocks and destroy all enemies with ease. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, there wasn't any more context provided for these three transformations. But at least for this one, I think it's still safe to assume that, likely being a reference to Crazy Wario from the Wario Land games, this transformation would have been similar. And these aren't the only transformations that were scrapped, as next, there's also Clown Peppino who is seen as a small easter egg in the game. But originally, this would have been featured in a scrapped level simply called Mansion, and then meant to have been seen in the Oregano Desert level. And there's also a Pizza Car transformation that was once meant to be obtained from an also unused Pizza Car enemy. I don't know man, this guy looks pretty chill, I wouldn't really want to carjack him. Anyways, in this pizza car, the player could simply move and jump. It doesn't sound like all that interesting of an ability, so I can see why this one was scrapped. Now next up, we got some transformations that are seen in the final release of the game, but either worked slightly differently and or have some associated graphics that didn't end up getting used. 
First up, the Knight Transformation, and this one used to work slightly differently in older demo builds of the game. The old knight had a really short range little stubby sword attack that was pretty useless outside of breaking certain things including some wooden walls, and this used to be one of the few abilities that could break super metal blocks which were ultimately scrapped from the game. Next, the fire mouth ability would have also worked slightly differently to how it's seen in the final release. Unlike the final version where you have more control over fire mouth Peppino and can make him stop in place, the original version had Peppino constantly moving, and unlike the final where you could keep the ability until you take damage or reach a priest, the original would only last for 10 seconds before an animation of Peppino chugging some milk would cure him of the ailment. Later on in development, an eventually scrapped ability to shoot fireballs was added, and the player could also get some free milk from this very generous cow in order to remove the transformation. Next up, probably everyone's favorite bird in the game, Mort. Although originally, when first introduced, he functioned around the same as he does in the final, instead of losing him when reaching a priest, you would instead have lost him to a comically large pile of corn. Interestingly, between his first introduction and the final version of Pizza Tower, there was one demo build where Mort actually functioned a bit differently too. Instead of chilling on Peppino's hat, he would have started to just follow the player around and could then be thrown around as well. And if you're wondering why I had like three Morts following me around at the same time, yeah, I have no idea. It was pretty weird. Next, even prior to one of the first early test builds of Pizza Tower, the original Barrel Transformation was planned to have an added ability which would let you use it to float on water. And then, much later in development, they were once the only way of destroying special barrel blocks. The original weenie was to be obtained by a scrapped enemy called Camembert Squire, and originally you could jump without having to ditch the weenie, and the ability didn't let you turn, as much like many of the other early transformations, it would send you automatically moving in only one direction. And the same goes for the rocket. Originally, there was no ability to turn it around at all. The original box transformation didn't give you extra jumps and would restrict you from dashing and was basically just used to slip under smaller passages with conveyor belts, basically being squished Wario from Wario Land 3, and these hands were basically these things also from Wario Land 3, which would pull you back to normal. Sticky cheese used to also let you stick to conveyor belts and would also let you fit through shorter gaps without having to crouch. And the ghost transformation also used to be different as you had to keep mashing the jump button to fly around in the air, kind of like Kirby. And originally, instead of becoming a ghost by touching a mushroom ghost, the player was actually going to just straight up die after getting shot by the ranch shooter. Now I've seen some people in the comments suggesting that this Swiss cheese transformation might have been related to this, but since this graphic predates the ranch shooter, these probably aren't related. Anyways, after turning into a ghost, in order to return back to normal, instead of finding a priest at this point, the player would actually have to find a tombstone, after which a casket would quite literally emerge from the ground to exhume the still very much alive body of the player. And interestingly, there were also two different kinds of these tombstones, one that was stationary, as well as this one that you could actually carry around and bring with you wherever you want. Now one of the biggest changes that was made to the ghost ability is that at one point, seen in a private playtester build of the game, with the ghost transformation the player could actually use it to take control of other enemies and use their abilities. Yeah, basically turning this transformation into Mario Odyssey's Cappy. I think this would have been a really cool mechanic in the game, so I think it's a real shame that this was cut. Now another big change is seen with how the bomb used to work compared to how it does now. Instead of just simply being a holdable and throwable item, originally, after obtaining a bomb, the player would start to constantly run in one direction, and all you could really do was jump around until it exploded in your hands or you reached a bomb block. Basically, it was the flaming Wario from Wario Land 3. Now in some builds, you could also throw the bomb while carrying it, but this ability was removed and re-added at various points in developing this game. And finally, although the ball transformation is again seen in the game, originally, similar to Wario's roll move in the Wario Land series, it could have been activated at will by simply just pressing down while standing on a sloped platform, instead of only from getting kicked by certain enemies. To add to this, there are also a few unused graphics for Peppino left over in the final game that are a remnant of this ability. 
There's him starting to slide down and transition into the ball phase, as well as this sign teaching you this move that was seen in older demo builds and this is also left over in the final cut of the game. Now I've mentioned some of the other unused playable characters in my previous video, but they also have various animations for the game's transformations, as I guess a remnant from back when they were still playable. For one, the Noise had his own set of knight animations, from picking up the sword, or sork, from the stone, to apparently eat some spaghetti, to walking, jumping, falling, and everything in between. There's animations for the ball transformation, flying with Mort, as well as throwing him, rolling in a barrel, riding a weenie, some unique animations for his fire mouth transformation, including him eating the spicy chicken wing, running with his mouth on fire, as well as his head turning into ash after getting some milk, some for the fire butt transformation, ghost noise, who would bear some resemblance to the boo enemies from the Mario series, Unique animations for Cheeseball, Bomb, Rocket, Clown, a Tiny Noise, which would have been his version of Pepino's Boxed, a Cheese Rat, which would have been the Noise's version of the Sticky Cheese transformation, and finally, probably my favorite, is instead of a shotgun, the Noise would actually get a massive minigun instead, as he is almost seen using in his boss fight before Noisette takes him away. And although most of the moveset became the same between the Noise and Pepino, this minigun actually worked differently than Pepino's shotgun, as it could fire off numerous rounds instead of a single blast. Then surprisingly, or unsurprisingly depending on how you look at it, there's only one unused transformation ability for the Vigilante, and that's just for his transitioning to and using the ball transformation, where it was less so a ball and more so him just slugging along. Now one scrapped playable character I haven't gotten to talking much about yet outside of his EXE appearance as a placeholder for the scrapped Pizza Mancer enemy in the also scrapped hard mode remnant seen in the final game is Snake the Porcupine that once again is definitely not a reference to anything else. Anyways, I'll talk more about Snick once we dive deeper into some Pizza Tower demos in a future video, but for now, Snick would have also apparently been able to get a transformation similar to the Knight once called Robot Snick instead. And although definitely not scrapped, nope, don't know who could make that mistake, Snick would have also had unique animations for the fire butt transformation where he would turn into fire for Snick. Hell yeah. And lastly for Snick here, he also had unique animations for the bomb transformation where his whole body would seemingly become a bomb and he would gotta go fast before exploding. I really like Snick, I hope he ends up getting added into the game in a bigger role someday. Now before we move away from the unused graphic stuff, in my last video I had went over several unused concept sketches for Pizza Head that were for a scrapped third phase for his fight. Well, as many of you had let me know in the comments, these were actually seen in an old playtester beta build where a fight against literal concept art would have happened after defeating an old version of Pizza Face. The fight appears to take place in a boxing ring, and probably the most interesting thing is that in this fight, at this stage in development, we actually had a life bar for each fighter in typical fighting game fashion. And yeah, here we can see a bunch of the scrapped attacks that we discussed in my last video, from the backwards boxing glove present, to the musketeer getup, and even the extendo leg kick. In one recording of some gameplay of this fight that was floating around the internet, music from a very old YouTube video called Ronald McDonald Insanity was playing in the background. If you've been around the internet for a while, chances are you've probably seen this at some point. Anyways, this had many people speculating that maybe this song was once intended to be added for this fight, but unfortunately since these playtest builds have been leaked recently, it's been found that this wasn't actually the case. Additionally, there's also some more concept sketches that show off a few more aspects to the scrapped third Pizza Head phase. There's art of him yelling out his attack, showing that Pepino would have to duck down to dodge it, Pizza Head getting enraged, some flailing arm attack, then not necessarily for the scrapped phase, but there's also some earlier concept sketches of Pizza Head getting into what looks like some old soldier uniform, as well as him seemingly begging Pizza Face for forgiveness. And interestingly, there are also a few sprites that were actually made up for this fight that have seemingly never been used, and here we can see not only Pizza Head getting enraged, but also another seemingly scrapped form for Peppino, where he would go absolutely beast mode in this fight. It's pretty crazy, and it looks like, much like as the game as a whole, the original plans for this fight were really different compared to what we got in the final cut. 
And lastly for the graphics, not technically unused, but rather normally unseen are these block fellas, as well as whatever these are. Now these are actually blocks that are used to hide the secret areas that Pepino can break through, and if you enable seeing collisions in the game via the game's debug menu, you actually can re-enable the ability to see them. This design was apparently once intended to replace the metal blocks that are seen in the game, but this idea was apparently met with some negative feedback, so they were just kept as hidden blocks instead. Hey, I guess at least they weren't removed completely. And then secondly, these things have been seen throughout the game's development history and appear to be used for platforms that you can jump through from beneath them. And yeah, these two can be seen again by enabling seeing collision. It's pretty interesting, especially when they're extremely wide like this. Alright, next up, let's talk about some unused audio files that are left over in the final game. Now, although there are various sound effects and several tracks from the soundtrack that aren't heard in the game, or some that were once planned to be added but never were, here I'm just focusing on the ones that are actually still left over in the release build. For starters, there's a short track titled Time's Up that was meant to play after the timer runs out and Pizza Face catches you. And this was ultimately replaced by the eloquently titled track, Your Fat Ass Slows You Down. We then got a track just titled Spaghetti that's listed in the files as Medieval Remix, and this is actually a remix of the Cold Spaghetti track made by Clashy Jitto. And finally, there's a track titled PT Entrance, and this appears to be an older version of the Unearthly Blues track featuring a loud as hell guitar track, as well as some different samples. Now next up are a pair of music tracks that can be heard in the game in one form or another, but their original intention was much different. For example, the track Pizza Mayhem, which can only be heard in the game's sound test, was actually originally supposed to be the game's opening theme song. Yeah, this song went from the planned opening theme to being relegated to the sound test where only a fraction of players would ever hear it. Talk about downgrade. And secondly, there's also a track titled Choosing the Toppings, and this one actually isn't in the sound test and can only be heard in the credits roll if you wait long enough. Now, before being relegated to this bot where also many fewer players would hear it, it was actually once intended to be used as the background theme for an apparently scrapped level editor that was also once planned for Pizza Tower. And lastly, as a bit of some cool trivia, on Mr. Sauceman, the Pizza Tower composer's website, we can see a bunch of his work over the years. And among these is a scrapped game that he worked on in 2017 called Betrace. And if we take a listen to the song here, you might hear something similar. Yeah, if this song sounds familiar, it appears that although this game was scrapped, this song was eventually repurposed as the final boss theme in Pizza Tower. Definitely a good thing that the song ended up getting reused because it absolutely slaps. And I think we'll leave it there for this video, but stay tuned as for the next one we'll probably be diving into some unused enemies, the many leftover unused rooms, and more. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell thingy to make your way back to the channel when it's up, and till then check out some of my other Lost Bits videos.
And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.